Stand together, let's praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. His mercies endure for all generations, to all generations. Thank God for joining us uh, today. This is Original Church of God in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is the place of blessing according to Psalm 133. And we're glad for everyone who has joined us in the sanctuary and virtually. And I don't care what you've gone through or what you're encountering right now. The Lord is still good. He still deserves our praise, still deserves our worship. Things have changed, but he never changes. He's the same yesterday and today and forevermore. He's still a great God, still a good God, still nobody like our God. Nobody can compare with him. He has no competition. He has no rival. There's nobody like our God. Come on one more time. Let's give him praise. Let's lift his name. Let's exalt him for his goodness. Let's bless him for his mercy. Hallelujah. Come on, bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless your wonderful name. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your wonderful name. Hallelujah. We lift you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Oh, God, you're good, you're great, you're mighty. You're our helper, you're our strength. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Today for our scripture from Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter number 12, verses 25 through 29. Hebrews 12, verses 25 through 29. as follows see that you refuse not him that speaketh for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven whose voice then shook the earth but now he hath promised saying yet once more I shake not the earth only but also heaven and this word yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you today for life. We thank you, Lord, for health and for strength. We thank you, Lord, for rising this morning. We thank you, Lord, for right activity in our minds. Lord, we thank you that you've made ways for us and opened up doors. We thank you, Lord, that you've lengthened our life, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to move in our life and bless us. We thank you, Lord, because there's nobody like you. And, Lord, we thank you today, God, for all that you've done, Lord, even for the things we don't realize that you've been doing, those blessings seen and unseen. Lord, we thank you. We bless you today for all that you're doing and for all that you've done. Oh, God, continue to help us and to move among us, Lord. We thank you, oh, God, for those that are gathered with us today to worship you and praise you. We thank you, Lord for the fellowship of your people. We thank you, Lord, because you are a faithful God and we can depend on you. There's nobody like you, Lord. And no matter what happens, Lord, we can depend on you. You are reliable, God. And there is nothing that is too hard for you to do. And so today, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this opportunity once again to come into your house to worship you and to praise you, Lord. Now, God, have your way during this time, Lord. We pray, God, that you, we will uh, remove anything, any hindrance, any opposition, Lord, uh, so that you might get the glory and praise. We thank you, O oh God, for what you are going to do as a result of our gathering here today, Lord. We don't know what uh, another is going through, through. We don't know, Lord, what someone will encounter even today or tomorrow. But, God, we know that our lives are in your hands. And we thank you, Lord, that we're in a safe place and a good place because we're in your hand. 
So now, God, have your way even as we worship and even as we praise and even as we hear your word, Lord. We pray, God, that you will have your way in our midst, Lord. Oh, God, have your way, Lord, and help us and bless us and make us better. We pray for those who are sick and suffering, that, God, you will touch them and heal them because that's, that's, that's what you can do, Lord. You are our, are our great physician, Lord, and there's nothing that is too hard for you to do. And so, Lord, we trust you today. Our confidence is in you. Our hope is in you, Lord, to do what no other power can do in our midst, Lord. Remember even our cities and this nation and the world, Lord, uh, we can, as we continue, Lord, to contend and to go through, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you have your way, that you would even touch the hearts of those in authority, that we might live quiet and peaceful lives, Lord. We depend on you, Lord, to do what we cannot do. Oh, God, and there is so much that we cannot do. But we know, Lord, that with you all things are possible. And so today, Lord, we depend on you and we trust you, Lord, to do and to work in our midst. So have your way today. Bless us. Make us a blessing. Help us to be better as we leave this place. Save souls, Lord. Deliver those that are bound. Heal those that are sick, Lord. Lift those that are burdened, Lord. Encourage those that are disappointed, Lord. For all that you, we, you do, Lord, we already give you praise. We already give you the glory. We already give you the honor. But we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, bless the Lord one more time. Come on, do it like you mean it. Come on, bless the Lord like you mean it. Hallelujah. Come on, join the praise team.
praise you. We praise you. Say we lift you. Say higher. We lift you. Say higher. Say we
so good you been so good everybody say you been so good can look back over our life and see you been so good So good. so good, you've been, been so, good. so good, last time you've been, been so, good. so good, you've been, been so, good. so good to me, <laughs> hallelujah, that's a great place to praise him. That's a great place to give him worship. He's been so good. He's been so awesome. He's been so mighty. He's been a way maker. He's been a healer. He's been everything we needed more. God, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. You have been sovereign. You have been gracious. You have been amazing. And we want to say we love you. We give you all the glory. Nobody like you. No. Yeah. We give you all the praise. Cause you be so good. You've been so good. You've been so good to me. God's been good to you, give him praise. Hallelujah. If he's been good to you, he's a good God, he's a great God, worthy to be praised, worthy to be magnified, worthy to be honored. Hallelujah. As you stand uh, to your feet, as you stand from Hebrews 12. This word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be sh shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and worship you. You've been so good. You've been so good today. You've been so good, Lord. Nobody compares with you. So, Lord, we come, Lord, to bless you and now to hear your word proclaimed. We pray, Lord, you'll speak to us out of your word that, God, you would make plain your message and your word today that you would help us that as a result of hearing and receiving and believing your word, we would go from this place and we would be better and we would be stronger as a result of hearing your word proclaimed. Give us a heart to receive. Give us ears to hear, Lord, what you have to say to us today and for all that you do. We already give you praise, but we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise one more time as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Today, I want to preach from this subject an unshakable kingdom. An unshakable kingdom. Uh, last week, uh, we preached from Hebrews chapter number 11 faith that pleases God. And people of faith uh, must activate and use their faith as they uh, go about their daily life. Faith is not just for salvation, it is also for daily living. 
as we worship and walk with God and work for God. And today, as we look at Hebrews 12, I uh, want to look at uh, this theme continued, really, uh, as we look at those heroes of faith uh, and as we also uh, put ourselves in this scripture text. An unshakable kingdom, uh, the, the, the kingdom of God, the, the kingdom of heaven, is everywhere Christ rules in the heart of man. Therefore, it's not a geographic kingdom. It, it doesn't have boundaries. It, it's not a, a country of such in a certain continent. But the kingdom of God is wherever men uh, uh, submit to the rule of God. John 3 tells us, except a man be born again, he cannot even see the, the kingdom of God. And since ours is a spiritual kingdom, uh, it, it doesn't have any boundaries as such. It is every, everywhere. Both Jesus and John the Baptist announced that the kingdom of God uh, is here. It has arrived. It's not a, a future hope. It, it is a present reality. And so even though uh, at that time, uh, I, I believe their understanding w was really limited, you and I have the benefit of all the scripture to understand that, that we're just not the family of God, that we're just not an army, we're just not a building, that we are a kingdom. We are a kingdom of, of people, and, and the kingdom of God stretches all over the earth for all times. The, what, the, the Bible gives us some other, other understanding of the kingdom of God. Uh, Jesus' uh, command for all those who would enter the kingdom of God is, first of all, to repent. He says, repent for the kingdom, uh, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's now. It's present. He says the kingdom of God has to be a priority. Matthew 6 tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things shall be added unto you. See, citizens of the kingdom of God uh, just can't do what they want to do. Uh, no, nobody's a part of a kingdom. Nobody's a part of a church. Nobody's part of a family that just does what they want to do. Yeah, amen. That's right citizens of the kingdom. He, he says in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of, of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. And, and so there are, certain, there are certain things that we have to do to be a part of the kingdom. Citizens of the kingdom are also, also have to be a determined and courageous and faithful. There, there's something required of us. Uh, Matthew 11 and 12 says, the, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. New Living Translation says, the kingdom of God has been forcefully advancing, and violent people are attacking it. And that, that, that lets us know that even as people of the kingdom of God, we have some opposition. We just can't live this life and expect that nothing is going to happen that is adverse to us. Uh, we, we can't expect that, that we won't have some problems because we still have an enemy. Even as, even as a part of God's kingdom, we still have an enemy. We still have an adversary, Satan, who goes about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, it, but it's a better kingdom because I, I've come to tell you today, it's an unshakable kingdom. Uh, remember last week we, we said that the writer of Hebrews, he was writing because the people were being persecuted for Christ and were being tempted to go back under, under the law and to, to submit to Moses' law. And they were be, being persuaded to, to trust really in, in the visible things, what they could see, rather than to trust in the invisible God. And, and the Jews, they were looking for a king to come and to rescue them. When they, were, when they were looking for, for uh, the, the Messiah, they were looking for a political leader. They were looking for a military leader. They were looking for somebody to come through there and do something and set them free. And that's why when, when Jesus is born in Bethlehem, 
And they talk about, you know, this little baby is born, and he's born in a stable, and he's laid off in a, in a feeding trough for animals. I, I don't know what kind of king that is. But, but it was enough so that the king at that time got worried and, and, and even took action, even to go out and have the baby killed. And then go and slaughter, I don't know how many young, young baby boys, two years and, and younger, because this baby Jesus was a threat to him. Be, because he, he really was a king. They didn't realize uh, the, the magnitude of, of his kingdom, but, but that baby was a king. He was born a king. And so it is uh, that their lives at that time were being shaken. And, this, and this, this scripture is still relevant for you and I today because our lives are being shaken. I'm not just talking about the stuff you hear on the news. I'm talking about people's lives individually. That, that, that there's some, some shaking going on in our lives. And, and God is not unaware of the shaking that's going on. Matter of fact, I believe God's got some, a whole lot to do with the shaking that's going on in, in our world today. So, some, some people are, are suffering from, from illnesses. And some people have some family issues. And in our world today, uh, there, there's no shortage of, of the problems that are going on. I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, there, there is nobody, I don't think, that can, that, that can look at our world and say that there is not something that's really going on un underneath the surface that, that is pushing all of, the, all of this violence all of this strife, all of this contention at, at every level. Mass shootings at school, mass shootings at workplaces. And sometimes folks don't even have a reason. They just got a gun. Racism without shame. They, uh, they don't even wear a hood over their face no more. Economic disparities, I don't care what they seem, what, 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 what programs or, or, or what legislation goes forth, uh, the, the, these economic disparities never seem to be made up. And the, and the rich seem to be getting richer and the poor seem to be getting poorer. And they wonder why people don't want to work, but you know, if I can't make a living wage, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I think most, uh, many of people, because of the pandemic, they've, they've discovered I can, I can set out on my own. I can start my own business. If it's in my kitchen sink, I can do it. If it's down in the basement or up in the attic, I can do something different. But there's still these economic disparities that, that are going on. And political people that, that won't control more than they want to govern effectively. They, they just want to they just want control for their party. They, they don't necessarily want to govern uh, effectively. That's why they, they won't even uh, uh, cooperate, collaborate with one another to get things done because they're so, they're so afraid that, that some, somebody on the other side is going to get an upper hand. And so now we got uh, these people that we have elected. Are, are y'all still here? We, we got these people that we have elected, that we voted for, and, and that uh, whose, whose pay uh, comes out of our tax money, and, and they fighting like little kids in a schoolyard. And here we are uh, in a world that's shaking. But just because the world's shaking doesn't mean that you and I have to shake with it. Today, you, you and I, as, as believers, we're part of an unshakable kingdom, a kingdom that cannot be shaken, a, a kingdom that cannot be moved, a, a kingdom that cannot be upset or intimidated, a, a kingdom that, that can be over, overcome or overthrown or, or defeated. And, and unless we're aware of that, we will adopt uh, the, the shaken attitude of this world. We will think that we have no other recourse but to go along with this world and what's happening in this world. But, but in our text, and, 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 and if I could, we just sit here for a long time today and read all the way through Hebrews 12. Some of y'all look like y'all got somewhere to go. 
or something to do. But 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 I, I believe that that this that this text is 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 really important for us. What what is the text? What is Hebrews twelve? And, and we're going to take some verses out of here for for understanding. Uh, what does it reveal to us about an unshakable kingdom? Uh, and and I hope you'll keep your Bibles open. Hebrews chapter number twelve, uh, b- verses one through four. Wherefore. Seeing we're also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You ever heard that before? All right. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. The, the first thing our text reveals about an unshakable, uh, an unshakable kingdom is that there are unshakable witnesses. The reputation and reliability of any kingdom is confirmed by its citizens. The kingdom of God has a cloud of witnesses. We talked about them last, last week. Hebrews chapter number 11, the, the, the heroes of faith. Th- these are the cloud of witnesses whose unshakable character set the example for you and I today. And, and I know that sometimes when we read that, that there's this great cloud of witnesses. Sometimes we have said, and I believe mistakenly, that, that they are like cheerleaders that, that are cheering us on. But, but, but I, I believe that they're not the cheerleaders that are cheering us on. I believe that they are the witnesses and that their life of faith is a witness to us of, of what trusting God can do. And we talked about uh, last week how, uh, how they walk with God and how they work for God, how they worship God. Uh, despite the adversity in their life, all of these things, all of these things they did by faith. And, and when you look at Hebrews chapter number 11, it will, it will take you down the list that by faith they did this and by faith that they did that, no matter what was coming against them, no matter what uh, the adversity was, no matter what the enemy was, by faith they overcame and by faith they, they conquered. They, they, they are not cheerleaders in, in that respect. However, their faith, that their faith that they live is a witness of what God can do when we trust him by faith. So, so then we should be encouraged because others have run the race before us. We live in a shaky world, be encouraged because other folks lived in a shaky world before us and God brought them through. And these unshakable witnesses, Hebrews chapter number 11, verses 33 through 35 said, they overthrew kingdoms, they ruled with justice, they received what God promised, they shut the mouths of lions, they quenched the flames of fire, they escaped death by the edge of the sword, their weakness turned to strength and became strong in battle, they put whole armies to flight, women received their loved ones back from death, and they refused to be turned back from God. Those are the unshakable witnesses that we have to follow today. And if that's not enough, verses 2 through 4 says Jesus is also one of those unshakable witnesses. Jesus himself was an unshakable witness of this unshakable kingdom. He did not give up even though he shed his blood and died, so we should not give up either. He says, you haven't resisted unto death. You haven't shed your blood. Here's Jesus' example and being part of this unshakable kingdom. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and he went through it for the joy that was set before him. Being part of the unshakable kingdom does not mean that we escape the tests and the trials, but it does mean that we can live victoriously and endure them. The unshakable kingdom, first of all, has unshakable witnesses. Then then verses 5 through 11 uh, gives us uh, the the understanding. uh, It says, and ye have 
and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you're rebuked of him. Those verses 5 through 11 talk about this unshakable relationship. You're going to be a part of an unshakable kingdom. You, you, can't, you can't be a rebel. You, you can't go out on your own. You've you got to be connected with somebody else in the kingdom. You, you, can't, you can't make up your own rules. You, you can't be the Lone Ranger. You, you, there, there, there are unshakable relationships that characterize this unshakable kingdom. And, and the strength of, of, of anything that, that, that involves more than one person, the strength of it is in the union of those, of those parts. Uh, the family that is together is a strong family. The, the family that is divided is a weaker family. A, a, a company where the employees and employers work together is a strong company. Uh, a, a company where everybody just does their own thing is a weaker company. And, and so it is also in the kingdom. So our text reminds us that as believers, we're children of the kingdom. You don't say you're adults in the kingdom. We are children. And, and children need direction and support and training. Scriptures never raise us up too high. If we're not children, then we're sheep. And you know what they say about sheep. But in the kingdom, we're not just children. He says, you're also sons. That, that, that's where the connection is. Sons meaning there's relationship, there's intimacy, there, there's closeness. And, and in the family of God, even now and today, we call one another brother and sister. We got fathers and mothers in the gospel. That, there's that relationship. And, 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 and that's part of the, the strength of, of the church even now and today, that those relationships still remain. The scripture says in verse number six, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Therefore, we don't have to fear the chastening of hand of the Lord because it is controlled by the loving hand of the Lord. It, it, you, you, as, as children, we didn't, I don't know if, uh, if we ever like discipline and structure and correction much, at least not me. As a, as a child, I figured I could, I could do well on my own as long as I could still come home to sleep and eat. But, but, our par but, 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 but my parents knew better. And, and so they set boundaries. There was discipline. There, there was structure. There was training for us. And, and, and that's part of, part of the, 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 the building of the relationship. And even now and today, in the, in the same way we submitted to natural fathers, the scripture says further down, believers have to submit to their heavenly father. And our submission results, it says in verse number 10, in us being uh, partakers of God's holiness and yielding, uh, and yielding the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And, and if we're going to be a part of this unshakable kingdom, we have to contribute something to the kingdom. And, and when we uh, align ourselves, when we submit to uh, the, 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 the discipline of the Lord, then we bring about holiness and righteousness uh, as, as an example example as a light to this world it, it, it's, it's not and 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 I didn't I didn't understand it when I was young I just thought my, my my parents were trying to stand in my way and keep me from doing stuff you thought the same thing but but then when I got older I I, I understood what they did so I did the same thing with mine no uh-uh no you can't go I don't care if everybody else is doing it. You're not going to do it. Everybody else don't live here. What's their last name? They don't live here. 
The, the, and the Lord knows for, for you and I as children and as sons, th this, for this relationship to work and for this, uh, for this kingdom to be unshakable, for this kingdom to go on and perpetuate, th there's got to be uh, this relationship where we submit to the rule of God. Come on, somebody. Unshakable relationships is unshakable. Uh, first, unshakable witnesses, unshakable relationships, and then uh, verses 12 through 17, uh, unshakable standards. Uh, unshakable standards. He, he, he says, and, I, and I, what I hope you, you'll do in your own devotional time is, is to read over this again because y'all don't want to stay all day. So, verse 12, he says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. What he's saying is, come on, strengthen yourself. You, 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 your, your children, your sons. So, so get a grip. So come on, strengthen yourself. I know it's a shaky world. I, I know there's persecution. I, I know that you're going through it. But, but you got the, the unshakable witnesses who have gone on before you. you, you you've got un, unshakable relationships with your heavenly father and with, with your brothers and sisters. So now, come on, get a hold of yourself. Get a grip. Put away your crying towel. Strengthen your hands. Strengthen your knees. Make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So, so do all of this so, so that you can strengthen somebody else. The, the, the writer says we have unshakable witnesses, unshakable relationships. So now strengthen your hands, strengthen your feet, make clear the path for your feet and be a good example to others so that the weak and lame don't, don't fail, don't fall as, as they follow you, but instead they become stronger. There, there's a standard for entrance into the kingdom. There, there's also a standard for living in the kingdom. He says, he says in the text uh, that, that there would be peace, which refers to our relationship with others, and holiness, which refers to our relationship with God. When, when, when we, if you remember uh, from Psalms 1, it points to a standard for our living. Blessed is a man, walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, or stands in the way of sinners, or sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he'll be like a tree planted, unshakable, planted by the rivers of the water that brings forth his fruit in his season. The, uh, the ungodly are not so, but are, they're like the chaff that the wind drives away. If we're going to be unshakable, we got to submit to, to God's standard for living. And the keeping of the standards is not doing away with, with grace in favor of works. It's not that you got to do this or, or, or you got to do this. When it comes to grace, we're glad to do it. We get to do it. We're honored to do it as a part of the family of God. So, so, so grace is not the absence of standards because God's grace does not fail, but we can fail to take advantage of God's grace when we fail to depend on God. That's why in those verses it mentions Esau, who, who gave up his inheritance for a bowl of stew. God, God already had uh, the, the, the end in mind but, but, but Esau didn't have to give it up like that. God knows how to work it out. God knows how uh, to manipulate it. God knows how to work behind the scenes. But, but Esau gave up what was his by inheritance for a bowl of soup. That, 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 that's, that, that's why uh, Titus reminds us that for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us. Grace is not licensed to get wild. Grace teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, 
we should live soberly and righteously in this present world. So, so, so when it comes to a matter of, of grace, it, it helps us even in submitting to the standards that God has for our life. It is uh, Esau's negative example that, that, that should remind us not to give up what is, uh, what is costly to God for, for something uh, that, that, that we can buy with a nickel or a dime. So it is uh, an unshakable witness, unshakable relationship, unshakable standard. We won't look at verses 18 through 24, uh, but, but, but he mentions there the law and, and Christ. And, and he makes mention of the, of the fact, and really I, I think in this text it's the example. He sets forth this example. He, he says... When, when they got the law and when Moses got the law, they were afraid. There was lightning, there was thunder, there was fire. All of this stuff was going on. As a matter of fact, when, 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 when God started to, to show uh, the, the law and all of, all of those things and, and the people saw all of that, they said, Moses, uh, tell God he don't have to talk to us. If you'll just talk to us, we'll be all right. Because the, the, the law brought that kind of fear. But, but then, uh, later on in, in the verses, he says, you, you, and that was on Mount Sinai, he said, but you, you haven't come to Mount Sinai. You, you haven't come to, to this place where there's the fear and the fire and the thundering and all of that. He said, but you've come to Mount Zion. Because Mount Zion is a city of the living God. It's a heavenly Jerusalem. It's a place where there's a, a numerable amount of, of angels. And the assembly of the saints is there. The, the people whose names are written down in heaven. Mount Zion is where Jesus was crucified. Jesus was a mediator of this, com of this new covenant. He says, now, now you haven't come to Mount Sinai, but you've come to Mount Zion. And, and in the, in the whole text uh, and in the whole theme of Hebrews chapter 11, uh, of, of the book of Hebrews, I'm sorry, what he's saying is, you come to a better place. And, and I've come to tell you today that we've come to a better kingdom, yeah. an unshakable kingdom. Yeah. He ends with the verses that we read today, verses 25 through 29. And, and, and he says, so now because of all this that I told you, so see that you don't refuse him that speaks. Don't, don't, don't turn your back on Jesus. See that, see that you don't refuse him that speaks. For, for if they uh, didn't escape when they refused him that spoke on earth, uh, we, we can't escape if we refuse him that spoke from heaven. He's, a be he's got a better word. So the last thing we want to talk about now is the unshakable word, unshakable witness, uh, the unshakable relationship, the, the un un unshakable standards, and, and finally, the unshakable word from Jesus himself. He says, so, so don't refuse the message of Jesus. At the very beginning of the book of Hebrews, he, he says this in, in, in uh, Hebrews 1 and 1. He says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, he said, spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he is appointed heir of all things, and by whom also he made the worlds. He says, now, if we're going to be a part of this unshakable kingdom, we got to hear the unshakable word. We got to hear this word that, that comes from Jesus. And Jesus' message is unshakable. Jesus' words endure. The scripture tells us heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. 
Jesus. Uh, Simon Peter answered answer when Jesus asked them and, and the people were, were, uh, were leaving Jesus and walking away. Uh, he, now, he, he, Jesus turns to the disciples and say, so are y'all going away also? And, and Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. He's saying that you have the word that we need. You've got the unshakable word. If we leave you, where are we going to go? If we leave you, where are we going to get direction? If we leave you, how are we going to get strength? And I come to tell you today, in the middle of this shaky world that we live in, if you walk away from Jesus, I don't know where you're going to go. I don't know where you're going to get direction. I don't know where you're going to get help. I don't know where you're going to get strength. I don't, I don't know how you're going to figure out the madness that's in the world today. If you walk away from Jesus, who's going to clue you in to all the madness that's going on in the world today? We're, we're unshakable because he's already told us from the beginning that he's in charge of everything, that nothing goes on and he doesn't know about it. A sparrow doesn't fall from the sky and he don't know about it, the hairs on your head, even those that you brush out every day, he still got them numbered. He tells us eventually the world will be shaken and destroyed, but only the kingdom of God, the unshakable kingdom, will last. So whatever happens here, the believer's life is built on a solid foundation that cannot be shaken. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And if you're standing on anything other than Jesus today, you're standing on some shaky ground. And Jesus teaches this truth in Matthew chapter number 7. He says, those of you who hear these sayings of mine and you don't do them, you're just like a man who went out and built his house on the sand. And he built his house on the sand and then the storm came and the rains fell and the wind blew. And as a result of the storm, because his house was just built on the sand, his house fell and great was the fall of it. And you want to you wanna know why some houses are falling today? Some houses are being shaken today? Because they built on the sand. But he said, if you hear these sayings of mine, if you hear this unshakable word, if you hear this word that will not change, if you hear this word of mine and you observe it, you do it, you obey it, you'll be like the man who built his house on a rock. He dug down deep until he hit a rock and the same winds and the same rain that hit the other man's house hit this house as well. But this house stood because it was built on a rock. And Jesus is that rock. He's the type of that rock that will not give way. He's the type of that rock that will not wilt, that will not wash away, that will not go down. And so it is that this unshakable word gives us stability in this shaky, wishy-washy, mad world that we live in today. Jesus' unshakable world, word in a shaky world uh, is seen throughout the scriptures. He told the demoniac in the cemetery, Jesus said to those demons, hold your peace and come out of the man. And they did just what Jesus said to do. Jesus said to the disappointed folks at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, he said, fill the water pots with water. And the water turned to wine because he spoke an unshakable word. He spoke a word that was destined to come through. And in your life and my life, his word is destined to come through if we'll just trust him. To the noble man whose son was near death, Jesus said to him, go show, go, go your way because your son is healed. His son wasn't there. His son was evidently miles away. But Jesus told him, your, your son is healed. When the man got home, he asked him, he, he came to his disciples, his son was alive, his son was better, his son was healed. And he asked him, well, what time did this happen? And they told him what time it happened, and it was at the same time that Jesus told him to go home because your son lives. Jesus said to the failed fishermen who were washing their nets, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a great catch. And they did just what Jesus said. And their nets filled up so much more so that their boats began to sink. 
he said to the leper who asked him, would he heal him? He said, I will be clean. And immediately the leper was made whole. He said to the paralytic that was let down through the roof by four friends, he, he, said, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees and the scribes started arguing with him. And he said, I can say your sins are forgiven or, he, or, or I can say, rise, take up your bed and walk. So he said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And the man still got up and was healed and began to walk because Jesus speaks an unshakable word in a shaky world. To the lame man at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, he asked him, do you really want to be made whole? And he said, yes, I want to be made whole. And Jesus told him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Well, well, they're not the only ones that need this unshakable word. You need it and I need it as well. And so to you and to you, me today, he says, come unto me, all you that labor and I am heavy laden and I'll give you rest. He says, rise up. He says, go forward. He tells us, don't be afraid in the middle of your fears. He reminds us, I'm with you. I've not left you. I won't forsake you. He says, I'll never leave you alone. Come unto me. He said, be strong. He says, my peace is yours. My peace I leave with you because he's just that kind of savior. We are a part of this unshakable kingdom. So shake off whatever's messing with you. Shake off whatever is bothering you. Shake off whatever's plaguing you. Shake off whatever's got your mind confused. Shake it off and get on top of this unshakable kingdom. Get a part of this unshakable kingdom that we're a part of and continue to live and continue to thrive and continue to be lights in this world of darkness. This world needs the light on and the church has to be the light of the world. We're the light of the world and we need to be be ever shining. Come on, put your hands together and thank God. Tell your neighbor I'm part of the unshakable kingdom. Now tell them like you mean it, I'm part of the unshakable kingdom. He, he ends, he ends, he ends this. He says, Last verse, for our God is a, a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. That, that, was, that was and that is a warning to those who are, attempt, who are tempted to, to abandon their faith and to go back. It, it, it's, a, it's a reminder of the other side of God. That, that, that God, yes, is a God of love, but, but he's also a just God as well. That he's a jealous God. And he won't have any other gods before him. And, and today, you and I, I hope that we're cognizant of the, of the privilege that we have as, as a people of God. Yes, we're, we're, we're a family and, and we like that, that aspect that we are uh, the family of God. Uh, we need a place where we can belong. We, we, need a, we need a place where we know people love us. You know, you know if, if you, if you uh, were raised in a, in a good home, uh, you knew uh, no matter how bad you been, uh, you could still go home. Now, you might have to get a whooping, but you can still go home. They're still going to feed you, still going to give you some clothes. They're still going to tell you that you're their son, you're their daughter. You know, anybody have parents like that that told them, I, I'm going to do this, and it hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> and we were saying, come on, prove that I am. We, 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 we love it because we're, we're, that, we're that family. We're, 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 that, we're that building. We're, we're the stones in the building. We're, we're connected. We, we got purpose. You, you know, you, you look at a building, you usually don't look at just one stone and say, ooh, that's, that's a beautiful stone. 
Because that stone's probably like every other stone in the building. But, but every, every stone in the building is needed to, to complete the building. It, it has purpose. We, 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 we even like it as, 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 as the fact that we're the, we're the army. Because we got somebody fight with us. You know, we, we just ain't left out here on the island to fight alone. We got somebody that's going to, to fight with us. But the, but the aspect of a, of a kingdom, you, what, what we've lost today, I, I believe in, in uh, natural leadership, is, is that the, the concept of, of king and kingdom that, that the king was really concerned about the kingdom because the kingdom reflected who he was as king. So he didn't want a bunch of poor people out who were, who were starving and, and begging because that was a reflection of him as king. He wanted to make sure they were taken care of. And I think mo what we mostly have today are, are leaders who give a whole lot of lip service to it, but, 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 but find it hard to follow through. But, but, but here is a king who is genuinely concerned about his kingdom. How, 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 how much does he care about his kingdom? That, that his kingdom was lost, that, that his kingdom was in peril, that, that what he had established had fallen because of one man's sin. But this king had a remedy And, and from the, the portals of heaven, here comes Jesus. He's somebody, one writer said, he's God's love letter. Cared enough so that God wrapped in flesh would come down to earth. And for those who even despised him and those who who even talked about him and those who ridiculed him and mocked him and even those who crucified him. That same Jesus died for them. He loved them enough. He loved you and I enough to pay the, the, the ultimate price and give his life and shed his innocent blood so that all men could be free and all men could live eternally in peace with God. T today, you can be a part of that unshakable kingdom. It doesn't matter which side of town you came here from. It don't matter if you had to, if you did have to come across the railroad tracks. God does business on both sides of the railroad track. Don't 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 matter don't matter uh, who you who, who your parents were no matter who your kinfolk are you know some of us got some rough kind of kinfolk but God don't exclude you because of who your who your relatives are matter of fact if you look through the scripture Jesus seemed to love them that were oddballs the outcasts. Doesn't matter who you are. You want to be a part of God's kingdom today. You can come. Won't you stand to your feet? It's unshakable kingdom. Unshakable kingdom. T today, today we need to we need to 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 realize that the, 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 the that precious kingdom that we're a part of if we're already saved today, if you're not saved, you can be a part of that kingdom. 
that, that Jesus' blood was, was shed for you on Calvary, that by faith in Jesus' sacrifice, that, that today you can be a part of that kingdom. So as they, they give us selection, we invite you to come. If you're not saved, you can come. If you've broken your relationship with God, you can come. Someone need to be saved. Just raise your hand right where you are. You need to be saved today. You want to be saved today. You want to, you want to turn your life around. The invitations for those in the sanctuary as well as those viewing virtually. You want to be saved today? Part of this unshakable kingdom. special prayer today. You've been feeling your, your world shaking. You need special prayer today. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of coming into your house, Lord. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you, Lord, for your precious word. God, we confess, Lord, that, that we live in this shaking world but we're a part of an unshakable kingdom. So, Lord, we, we come to ask you to steady our feet and steady our hands, Lord, as we live for you, as we witness for you, as we, as we go forth to do what you would have us to do. We confess we need you, Lord. We confess that we cannot do anything without you. So, God, help us today. Strengthen us today by your spirit, by your power, by your might, Lord. Oh, God, help us today to be lights in this world of darkness, Lord. Help us, Lord, to, to be a steadying force in our families and on the job and, and in our community and wherever we go. Help us, Lord, to be the steadying influence that others need to see in these last days, in these evil times, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be your lights. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the privilege of being called your children. Now help us, Lord, to bring honor and glory to your name. For everyone who lifted their hands, I pray a special blessing upon them that, God, you would intervene in their situation. That, that for those who have an unfavorable diagnosis, that, God, you would heal them and touch them. You are our great physician. Do what no other power can do. For those who got the situations on their job or in their home or their community or with loved ones, oh God, we pray that you would help us, Lord, to be those that mend the fences, Lord, and those that build the bridges, Lord. That we would not be those who, who are the, 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 the fighters and, and the brawlers, but God, that we love like you love. We forgive like you forgive. We help like you help. Help us, Lord, to be your hands, your feet here on the, on the earth. God, we thank you for all that you've done and for all that you're doing. God, we give you praise for every good thing, every great thing you continue to do for us. Bless us now. Make us a blessing. We pray for this church, Lord, every member and every family, that, God, you would be with us and help us. Hold us up, Lord. Strengthen us. Save in this house, Lord deliver in this house. And God, for all that you do, we already give you praise. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, bless God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God.
Praise God. We are uh, grateful for everyone here in the sanctuary, everyone who's joined us virtually. Uh, we will give in the sanctuary as we exit out today. Uh, baskets will be in the rear of the church uh, for you. Those who are viewing virtually, uh, you can give four different ways, and they'll put the information on the screen for you to give. I want to thank those who have uh, supported this church and ministry uh, and continue to do so. Uh, we, we so much appreciate uh, your gifts at this time. Thank this congregation for your faithful giving. Thank you for your faithful giving. Amen. Thank you for your faithful giving. Amen. I know, I know it's, it, it's different. It, it, it's a different time we live in, uh, but God's still the same. Uh, and, and his people have to remain steadfast and faithful uh, to him and to his word. So let, let's thank God for those who have joined us virtually as we sign off today. Thank God for you. Next Sunday, 10 a.m., we'll see you again.